So good morning and welcome to worship with St. Mark's United Church. As you can tell, I am not in the office or um, at the church today. I am here though in a special place, a sacred place for me. It is the RV park I have spent many years in with family and friends and have enjoyed lots of summers here. So today in worship, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion for the first time virtually. And so I would invite you, if you want, to take a minute or two now to get a some sort of bread, um, crackers, uh, a bun, or maybe a cookie or two to share with those in your home as we share communion, and um, and some something to drink with it, some juice or maybe coffee or milk water, whatever you would like to have for communion today, because when Jesus shared his meal with his friends, the meal we remember, he was eating and sharing exactly what they had that night at the table and shared it with love and grace. And so that's what we will do today as well. Um, so again, welcome to Worship with St. Mark's and we wish you the best this coming week. now since we celebrated Pi Day. The Affirm Committee at St. Mark's had the pleasure of leading the worship service on March the 15th to celebrate Pi Sunday. You may recall that the P stands for public, I stands for intentional, and the E stands for explicit. The United Church of Canada across the whole country calls all of us to be public, intentional, and explicit about our commitment to welcoming all people in our congregation, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. On behalf of the Affirm Committee at St. Mark's United, I want to wish you all a happy Pride Month. In Canada, as well as many other countries in the world, June is Gay Pride Month, usually a time for festivities, parades, and gatherings to recognize the progress that has been made in acceptance of the LGBTQ and two-spirited community. Unfortunately, in light of ongoing discrimination and the eroding of rights of gay and lesbian people, we are all called to continue the struggle for liberty and to stand with our gay brothers and sisters. We cannot come together physically to celebrate Pride Month this year, but we can come together in our hearts, minds, and in our prayers. Jesus loved all people, and of course God loves us all beyond our wildest imagining, and calls us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. At St. Mark's, we are on the path to becoming recognized as an affirming congregation. May we make everyone feel welcome, 
in our congregation, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. May we let the rainbow shine during this Gay Pride Month. Stay safe, everybody, and God bless. Our Christian faith teaches us that there is mystery and wonder in our relationship with God, a mystery and wonder that opens in our worship and in our active discipleship. Equally, the mystery is expressed as we relate to God as Trinity, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Mystery, yes, but at the same time, revelation, one God whose fullness is lived in relationship. So we light this candle, naming the life-giving, gracious presence of our Redeemer within our relationship with the Creator and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Sculpting God, you give galaxies their form, shape granite mountains and design delicate butterfly wings. Dancing God, you choreograph the paths of the stars in the flight of the Canadian geese. Singing God, your divine song is sung by mountain streams, nesting wrens, and in the winds of storms. God of all things, we rejoice that we are a part of this divine world where your grace, love, and strength can be felt any time in our lives. May this time together bring us closer to you and to one another. Amen. From the second book of the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Final greetings. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. And from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, the Great Commission. When the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So just a few minutes ago, I was outside recording the service, and um, the temperature dropped about 20 degrees, and it started to pour. And so I came inside, um, not so much to stay dry, but to, to warm up. So you are now inside the palatial mansion of um, of our family here at the RV park. So welcome to my home. You may also notice that I've taken out my contacts because I could no longer see anything. And as much as I wanted to, um, you know, pretend I was not reading my sermon, it was getting very, very frustrating. But back to what we need to be doing this morning. Today is Trinity Sunday. This is a Sunday we celebrate a theological doctrine that has not found in scripture. There are no examples of prophets or Jesus or the disciples discussing what we call the triune God. But we have a doctrine that has been created by theologians and historians who have worked with and studied the Old and New Testaments and have established that indeed the Judeo-Christian God is in fact one God with three distinct ways of revealing God's self to the world. We have come to know these revelations as God the Creator, Father is often the term some people use, God the Redeemer, Son, Jesus, and God the Sustainer, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the one who was sent after Jesus um, ascended. The Trinity has been a difficult doctrine to defend, for the one God we have faith in looks like three gods to others who do not know or understand this Christian doctrine. And it would be lovely to say that it's only people from other faiths that struggle with the concept of the triune God. But in reality, many of us who call ourselves Christians stumble over this theological concept. The heady concepts of the doctrine of the Trinity make it hard also for some of us to believe in God because we want to be able to say that we understand what we believe, that we, we know how things work in our faith. The author Anne Lamont provides encouragement for those of us who struggle with this doctrine. In her book, Plan B, um, Plan B, it has some more to that, Further Thoughts on Faith, she says the following that she didn't need to understand the hypostatic unity of the Trinity. She just needed to turn her life over to whoever came up with the redwood trees. She turned her life over to whoever came up with the redwood trees. These words are meant to offer encouragement to those of us who are struggling with this doctrine. But I have my own example of how I might understand the triune God or get my head around the triune God. I own a car like many of us, or at least most of us have maybe been in a car or a bus or a plane. And I don't know about you, many of you may know this, but I have no clue how the engine of my car works. I know there's some sort of thing about combustion engines and, um, you know, the mechanics of the car. I just have no clue how it works. 
But what I do know is that cars are a wonderful way to get from point A to B. Cars allow me to help people, to get to, to places I want to be, to be with people I want to be with. And so, although I do not understand how my car works, I do have um, a sense of, of belief that when I get in my car, it will work. So the scriptures that Bruce read for us today are meant to encourage and guide the readers and help us understand our relationship with God and how God works and our part of it. However, it is more than one God appearing in three different ways that we have to understand because there is a tendency to also want to say that God the Father is sort of the upper echelon of the God um, ladder and Jesus and the Holy Spirit somehow fall in underneath of God the Creator. But because this doctrine is so hard to make clear, it is best to base our understanding on what we see God doing, much like my car, that I don't understand how it works, but I do know that it does work. The triune God, when we look around us, demonstrates love for us and for each other, for the relationship of the three within that triune um, relationship. The three elements of God work together to accomplish the purpose of bringing about love and peace in this world. The Trinity helps us understand community. The Greek word that scholars use to describe how the creator and redeemer and sustainer work together is parachoyous, which means dancing around. There exists a divine dance between the three revelations of God in order to complement each other's work. The three are always moving and swaying and sidestepping and encircling each other in order to support each other to do the best work possible. And as the words in Matthew scripture suggest to us today, we are invited into that relationship and into that dance with the triune God. Jesus said to the disciples and to us, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And I do so knowing that the Holy Spirit will equip and accompany you. So God's primary work is to bring about the reality of love and grace and peace in this world and in our time. And our part in that is to have faith, not to get hung up on how it all works, but to have faith that as we enter into the dance, the God who created, the God who redeemed, and the God who sustains us will be with us. That indeed, yes, it is a mystery of how it all works, but our faith is meant to encapsulate the love, the grace, and the peace that is shown to us in the triune God. Amen.
The invitation to communion is always a festival of friends, a pulling together of our loves and our hopes, our moments of agony and our glimpses of victory. It is here where bread is broken and where wine is shared that we can most fully be ourselves and see others for who we truly are, sons and daughters of the living God. Here in the common things of bread and wine, memories and dreams become holy, touched by God. Here that which is earthly becomes divine, and that which is human becomes more than it could ever have dreamt. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God's thanks and praise. Loving God, source of all, we thank you and praise you with our lips and with our lives, that having created us in all things through your word, you welcome our prayers and praise. For the goodness of creation and the glory of redemption, we praise you for the law of holiness, inviting our obedience and the call of prophets, rebuking our disobedience, we praise you. Therefore, with all that has, is seen and unseen, and with all the faithful of every time and place, we join in the hymn of praise and thanksgiving. and thanksgiving over the bread and cup because in Jesus you have joined yourself forever to us uniting heaven and earth now therefore we gratefully remember Jesus birth into our humanity baptism to show understanding for our shortcomings compassion for our suffering intimacy with our frailty bearing the cross with its death, and rising from the tomb through the power of God. On the night before he died, it was Jesus who took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take and eat whenever you do this. Remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant. Remember me. Loving God, creative power, bless in your name, we see your spirit. Come to us and bless these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may be for us the body and life of Christ, the sign and seal of our forgiveness and our adoption as your children. As we eat and drink together, make us one with Christ and one in Christ, a sign of his eternal presence in all the world. We offer our praise and thanksgiving to you, loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. As we share now in the in communion, we take the bread that we have chosen to share with those at our tables or virtually at our tables this morning. And we we can do many things. We can dip it like we do in church, which I might do this morning, or you can take the bread separately and drink your juice or beverage um, following that. But however we share or eat these elements this morning, know that we do this in the love and grace of, of God, remembering Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table, granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world, united with in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are most grateful for your continued support of the life and work of St. Mark's United Church. Your help has helped us continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the world during this pandemic. If your employment has been affected by the current situation, we understand that you are unable to 
um, offer financial support at this time, but we are grateful for the many ways you have offered your time and talents in the past and will continue that in the future. If you are able to make an offering to the church at this time, there are a few ways to do that. You can mail checks to the church office. You can also enroll um, for the pre-authorized remittance program. That's um, And if you phone the church office, Jennifer can help you line that up. Or you could go on the internet and Google Canada Helps St. Mark's United Church and you can make an online do donation there as well. We thank you for the many ways that you help the church always. Let us take a moment now to reflect on the many gifts that the Creator has given us and how we can use them more efficiently and effectively to co-create with God the reality that God holds in, in their heart for us. Go forth into the world, for the love of God is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is yours to offer. For the God who longs to be in relationship with you has kept the promise to always be with you. Amen. <laughs>